Welcome to the Ace Pilot Academy. In this video, we will be learning about multi-engine performance and limitations. Pilots of multi-engine aircraft must consider various factors to make the best decision should an engine fail during takeoff. These factors include the multi-engine aircraft's performance and limitations to plan decision points for an appropriate course of action. Multi-engine aircraft have performance charts located in the airplane flight manuals or pilot's operating handbooks. Two important performance and limitation figures from the charts are the accelerate stop distance and the accelerate go distance. Accelerate stop distance is the runway length required to accelerate to a specified speed, abort the takeoff, and bring the airplane to a complete stop. Accelerate go distance is the horizontal distance required to continue the takeoff and climb to 50 feet, assuming an engine failure at a specified speed. The specified speed may either be VR or VLOF, which are V-speeds for rotate and liftoff speed respectively, depending on the aircraft manufacturer. Another performance figure to understand is the climb gradient. The climb gradient is a slope frequently expressed in terms of altitude gain per 100 feet of horizontal distance and is stated as a percentage. For example, a 5% climb gradient is an altitude gain of 5 feet for a horizontal travel distance of 100 feet. Unlike rate of climb, climb gradient is affected by wind. The climb gradient improves with a headwind and is reduced with a tailwind. The pilot can use these performance and limitation figures to pick a decision point in the takeoff and climb sequence in advance. If an engine fails before the decision point, the takeoff should be rejected, even if airborne, for a landing on the runway or suitable surface ahead. If an engine fails after the decision point, the pilot should promptly execute the appropriate engine failure procedure and continue the climb, assuming the performance capability exists. A general recommendation would be that the takeoff should be rejected even if airborne, if the landing gear has not yet been selected up. This is because performance and limitation figures are developed in ideal conditions with immediate reaction times, no wind, and brand new aircraft equipment such as engines, propellers, and brakes. The performance and limitation figures are hard to duplicate in actual, real-life conditions where wind gusts, aircraft equipment wear, and a delayed response time can negate these performance figures. The regulations do not specifically require that the runway length be equal to or greater than the accelerate stop distance for multi-engine aircraft to take off. Most airplane flight manuals or pilots operating handbooks publish accelerate stop distances only as an advisory. It becomes a limitation only when published in the limitations section of the airplane flight manuals or pilots operating handbooks. However, experienced pilots would use the accelerate stop distance as the minimum runway length required as an added margin for safety and good operating practice, even though the regulations do not specifically ask for it. Another point to consider is that the accelerate go distance only describes the distance at which an aircraft will only be 50 feet above the ground after takeoff, with one engine inoperative. Multi-engine aircraft operating with only one engine will have severely degraded performance, such as the ability to climb and maneuver to return back to the airport. The pilot should conduct a pre-takeoff safety brief that clearly defines all planned emergency actions to all crew members and review all emergency considerations even if operating the aircraft alone. Indecision at the moment an emergency occurs degrades reaction time and the ability to make a proper response. Let us review. The accelerate stop distance is the runway length required to accelerate to a specified speed, experience an engine failure, and bring the airplane to a complete stop. The accelerate go distance is the horizontal distance required to continue the takeoff and climb to 50 feet, assuming an engine failure at a specified speed. The climb gradient is a percentage that represents altitude gain per 100 feet of horizontal distance and is affected by wind. The pilot uses performance and limitation figures to create a decision point during the takeoff to determine the proper course of action. The takeoff will be rejected if the engine failure occurs before the decision point. The takeoff will continue if the engine failure occurs after the decision point. Thanks for joining us at the Ace Pilot Academy. See you next time.